Welcome to our series of quick start guides designed to help you get up and running fast. Creating a, an approval process involves creating a workflow. A workflow is a way to pass records from one person to another while tracking what state it's in. For example, let's use a simple project request. First, select the object you want to add the process to, and then click Customize. Then choose Workflow and New Workflow. Workflows are made up of states, actions, and decisions. A project can have a lot of different states, for example, evaluation, acceptance, rejection, etc. And each state has an owner or a set of owners that are responsible for advancing the flow. The workflow owner can advance the flow by several defined actions. We'll get to that in a second. How that routing happens on an action is determined by the decision box, and it's optional. Let's create the first stage and action. First, I'm going to drag the state icon onto the canvas. I'm going to fill it in the name of the state and who's responsible for it. In this case, submit for evaluation. We'll choose an owner for this. In this case, we'll choose user's choice, but I can easily automate who owns this particular state. Likewise, I can add additional decision makers. So, for example, if you need multiple levels of approval. I can also determine if and when they're notified about this particular item. For example, if I select send an email, they'll be able to reply to an email without having to log into Long Jump and advance the workflow. If I say post to their feed, they'll be able to click on a link in their relay wall to advance the workflow without having to, again, open the record. Next thing I'm going to do is drag an action from the start circle to the submit. And I'll give this button a name. And this button is what will appear on the record. When the user clicks on the record, they'll be able to advance to the evaluation stage and then await the next step. Let's call, let's create an approved state. When that's been rejected. And when that's been deferred. And in fact, for my rejected, I want to send it back to the original record owner and actually allow them to edit it. So next, I'm going to create actions. This one's an approved. Reject. and we'll have one for deferred. Now, when the user click, when whoever is responsible for the workflow action at this state, they're able to see these buttons and then trigger the next level of activity. Now, let's say we want to, uh, when you click on approve that actually can go to several different places. Uh, in that case we'll use a decision tree or decision box that is marked for type and so in this case when I go and create the type I can make a decision whether or not to send it to approval I'm going to look at the type field and if it e is equal to web then that's going to send to my web team
if I'm going to send it to my print team, I have a different stage for that. Let's rename this one. So I've got different approval. So based on the value of whatever's in that record, it's going to funnel to different people. Here's what the entire workflow might look like. The way the workflow manifests itself is when you're looking at a record, you can see that the workflow buttons are active and available. So you can start to send for evaluation. And as it transitions throughout the workflow, you can see that uh, we track the information as to who, where it's at, what state it's in. And so it's logging this information directly. If I were to refresh our view, I could see that this particular project request, uh, where it's at, and when it was modified.